Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the uh, final afternoon of the APMS conference. I hope you will enjoy these afternoon's talks. The first one will be given by Professor uh, Toshihiro uh, Tsuchiyama from Kyushu University, uh, titled Soft Particles. Yeah. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, <coughs> uh, my name is Tsuchiyama from Kyushu University, and uh, 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 the co workers are listed here. And uh, particularly, I'd like to thank uh, Professor Murayama from Virginia Tech, who helped me for TM observation. And the title of my talk is Soft Particles. Uh, that means a uh, uh, precipitate with a soft, uh, with a lower shear modulus than that of ion matrix. So uh, I'd like to talk about the plastic deformation and the mechanical dissolution or strange dissolution of copper precipitates in steel because it may improve the deformability of a high strength steel seed. So firstly, I'd like to define the term heterostructure. The convention, conventional heterostructure in my talk means microstructure containing hard second phase particles uh, such as carbide, martensite, and so on. And uh, now uh, imagine the hard second phase exists in the ferrite matrix, matrix and the strain is given to this, ma uh, this material. So in that case, dislocation can move the, in the ferrite phase but cannot go through the hard particles and pile up at the interface like this. Uh, therefore, the stress concentration would occur at the interface due to the uh, discontinui discontinuity of plastic deformation. At the same time, the macroscopic stress partitioning would also occur between phases, and as a result, the work hardening rate of this material would be increased, and this leads to an uh, enlargement of uniform elongation because uh, the because, uh, uh, occurrence of plastic instability is shifted to a uh, higher strain region. However, the stress concentration causes the formation of microvoid at the interface like this. So, so therefore, the, it is pity that the ductile fracture would be enhanced, and also the local elongation is reduced uh, when the, we use the uh, heteros, uh, conventional heterostructure. So uh, let me explain about the uh, mechanical properties of commercial steel seeds. The upper figure shows the relation between tensile strength and elong elongation, and the lower one is uh, uh, that between strength and the whole expansion ratio. As you know, whole expansion is one of the important deformation mode in press forming process, and that is known uh, to uh, correspond to a local elongation. So now uh, look at the property of uh, Trip steel and DP steel, which are the typical uh, heterostructured materials containing hard martensite phase. The elongation of these materials uh, is uh, very high uh, compared with other uh, steel seeds, uh, which is due to the large uniform elongation. But the uh, whole uh, expanding ratio of the steel is very low. It may, uh, due to the poor local elongation, uh, derived from the uh, stress concentration at the hard uh, second phase. On the other hand, homostructured material, such as Benedict single structured material, has a uh, relatively low elongation, but the whole expanding ratio of this steel is very high. So this result indicates that the uh, elongation and the whole expanding ratio is in a trade-off relationship, just like uh, strength and elongation. So, but we want to improve both properties at the same time. Uh, it is difficult, but I think it's realizable by using uh, uh, fine soft particles such as kappa precipitates. So as you know, the precipitation of kappa causes uh, precipitation hardening of steels. Uh, this means uh, uh, kappa particles strongly interact with dislocation and uh, prevent the uh, dislocation movement in the ion matrix. Uh, so so uh, this situation is uh, similar to, uh, this situation is similar to the case of uh, conventional heterostructure in this case. But this case is in, uh, the case of the, in the early stage of deformation. However, in the highly strained region, copper particle is plastically deformed and elongated like this. So it is guessed 
that the uh, uh, plastic deformation of copper particle itself uh, leads to a relaxation of stress concentration at the uh, interface. And also, uh, the significant morphological change and uh, sometimes dissolution may lead to a disappearance of strengthening effect by copper. So this is similar to the case of homostructure. So by such a structural change of copper dispersion steel, a so-called hetero to homostructural transition, the microvoid formation would be uh, suppressed or retarded. And we can expect that both uh, uniform and local elongation would be ensured. And we can obtain a, a high strength steel with a, a excellent deformability. This is my story, my uh, adventure story. Okay. And, uh, there, is, there are some uh, experimental ev evidence for my idea. So this is a strength elongation balance in copper bearing low carbon steel, which was uh, reported in Japanese national project called the Nanometal Technology Project. As you can see, the uh, mechanical properties of copper bearing molten stick steel, uh, shown by the red circles, have uh, uh, a better uh, strength elongation balance compared with the copper-free, low-carbon molten stick steel. In addition, the uh, copper dispersion ferritic steel, uh, strain strain curve, stress strain curve of copper dispersion ferritic steel, this one, is characterized by a large local elongation and uh, reaction of area compared with the hard carbon dispersion steel, uh, like this. So from this result, from these results, I thought that the uh, precipitation of copper is effective for not only strengthening, but also uh, maintaining the ductility, ductility, uh, uh, ductility uh, especially uh, local elongation. So in order to demonstrate my idea, we set several targets like this. And the final purpose of this study is uh, to establish a design principle of soft particle dispersion steel. But in, uh, today, I'd like to focus on the first one, that is to obtain direct evidence of mechanical dissolution of uh, copper particles during plastic deformation. And uh, I, uh, also, I'd like to uh, mention about the uh, dissolution mechanism uh, a little bit. So let me explain about the uh, detail of specimen. We used, or, uh, mainly used uh, iron 2% copper uh, ferritic steel. So in addition, the other hard carbide dispersion steels, uh, we use the VC steel, that is, uh, iron 0.2% carbon, 0.9% vanadium. And the chemical, uh, this, uh, the chemical composition of these steel were controlled to form the same amount of precipitates. Uh, that means 1.4 volume percent of epsilon copper and the VC carbide should be precipitated in these uh, uh, materials, respectively. And the copper steel was subjected to simple solution and the aging treatment. And the aging temperature was set at 873 Kelvin. And the VC steel was uh, firstly uh, subjected to quench and tempering to disperse the VC carbide within the molten site matrix. And then the uh, specimen was reheated to a austenite uh, plus carbide region followed by furnace cooling to cause a diffusion or ferritic transformation. So uh, during the aging treatment, the hardness and the uh, structure of copper particle is changed like this. So the copper is firstly precipitated as a BCC structured particle, but it uh, transformed to 9R, 3R, and finally stable FCC structure uh, called epsilon copper. So from the uh, industrial point of view, the peak aged material is the most important. But uh, in this study, we used uh, over aged uh, material. Uh, we used overage specimen because of the, its simple phenomena uh, without uh, deformation into transformation and ease of tra uh, observation. So by using TM, uh, we could observe the dispersed particles. The, this one is a copper, epsilon copper particles, and the, this one is VC carbide particles. As you can see, they have similar morphology, size, and the uh, size distribution like this. And the mean particle size of the copper particle is 35 nanometers, 
and uh, that of VC steel was 37 nanometer, almost similar. So for these specimens, cold rolling was performed. So this is a change in hardness with cold rolling as a function of equivalent strain like this. And uh, the result of IF steel is also pro uh, uh, shown uh, for reference. So we can see that the, uh, the hardness of copper steel and VC steel is higher than the IF steel. Uh, due to the dispersion strengthening by kappa, epsilon kappa and VC carbide. And this, the strengthening effect is kept even after uh, heavy core rolling. So here, to, uh, to clarify the effect of dispersed particles only, the hardness was reported as a function of the square root of dislocation density. And we could obtain a straight relationship, so-called very harsh relationship. So in the IF steel, the hardness could be regarded to increase only by dislocation strengthening because there is no precipitate particles. While in the VC steel, the hardness change is almost parallel to IF steel. So this means that dispersion strengthening by uh, VC carbide is simply added to the strengthening, uh, dislocation strengthening. St strengthening. Although it is difficult to understand the interaction between dislocation strengthening and dispersion, particular dispersion strengthening. Uh, but, but anyway, uh, the most important point of this figure is the hardness of copper steel. The dispersion strengthening uh, by copper is almost similar to the, that of VC uh, carbide like this. However, the hardness of copper steel is significantly lower in the highly strained region like this. So this means that dispersion strengthening by copper is decreased or uh, weakened by cold rolling or introduction of dislocations. So let's, uh, let's see the internal structure of the uh, copper particles. Uh, this is an, a, a, a TM image of epsilon kappa particle in overaged, as, as aged specimen before cold rolling. So although a uh, small amount of uh, metastable 9R structure was also observed, but almost all particles were uh, FCC structure, uh, FCC uh, epsilon kappa particles like this. So after cold rolling, we could observe uh, many kinds of, various kinds of deformation structure. Uh, this is an example of a 5% cold rolled, cold rolled specimen. So as you can see, there are many uh, thin deformation twins are formed within the copper particles. And also the interface of particle is irregularly varied like this. So this uh, observation result indicates that the copper particle itself caused plastic deformation by 5% cold rolling. And after 70% cold rolling, the morphology of copper particle is completely changed and elongated to the rolling direction like this. But uh, uh, it is interesting that the aspect ratio of the copper particle was not constant. So some particles are markedly elongated uh, and have a large aspect ratio, while uh, the, some uh, other ones hardly deformed and have a small aspect ratio. So we haven't uh, confirmed, confirmed yet, but I think the deformability of copper particles depends on the crystallographic orientation of copper particles or variance. Okay. And uh, this is a magnified uh, ca er elongated copper particles in 80% 80, 80 cold rolled specimen. Interface is here. And from the arrangement of atoms, we could find a dislocation here. And uh, we could see uh, a cellular contrast within the copper particles. So this suggests that the, uh, a significant amount of lattice strain is stored in the elongated copper. And this is a, a part of a tip, tip of the elongated copper. So here is interface, but it becomes uh, unclear around the uh, tip. So I thought that the, this copper, epsilon copper particles is disturbed into the ferrite matrix here. So we measured uh, the 
chemical composition of elements by using EGS along this line. And this is a copper particle, and here is a tip. So as you can see, the concentration of iron and copper is gradually changed along this line. And it should be noted that the, the concentration of copper is irregularly changed. I think uh, it is due to the dissolution of copper here. Of course, we need much more uh, analysis. So for the uh, macroscopic evidence, I me we measure the lattice parameter of the of cold rolled copper steel and pure iron and plot it as a function of a reduction by cold rolling like this. And in the pure iron, the lattice parameter is never changed uh, even after heavy cold rolling. However, that of copper steel tends to be slightly, slightly increased like this. And in the 70% cold rolling, the lattice parameter of copper steel is increased by 0.0000. .0000 five nanometer. <laughs> you may think it's too small, but uh, uh, from the uh, calibration line, okay? Calibration line showing the lattice parameter and the concentration of solid copper, that this uh, small increment correspond to the increase in solid copper by 0.6%. So uh, since the initial amount of precipitated copper was 1.6%, so the, this value corresponds to uh, almost one third of precipitate. So in addition, if the copper was truly dissolved, so re-precipitation would occur by aging treatment after cold rolling. So we attempted to detect the re-precipitation of copper by using DSC analysis. So this is a result of uh, as aged material and aged and uh, 19% cold rolled materials. So we can clearly see that the high temperature peak at around 490 degrees C in both materials. So this peak is uh, known to correspond to a, a growth of epsilon copper or the transformation of copper from 9R to FCC. But the low temperature peak at 266 uh, 66 degrees C is visible only in the cold rolled materials. So this peak is believed to be a formation of copper cluster. So this result means that the precipitation occurs only in the cold rolled material. In other words, dissolution of copper occurred by cold rolling, uh, by 90% uh, <laughs> cold rolling. And uh, finally, I'd like to talk about my opinion uh, on the possible mechanism of mechanical dissolution of copper particles. I assume that the uh, uh, dislocation coming from the ferrite phase can go through the copper particle by cutting like this. In that case, the atomic scaled in, uh, edge will be formed like this. So in that case, the uh, corner and the new interface should have a high energy. So the solubility of copper would be uh, locally increased according to uh, Gibbs-Thomson equation. But this is just a necessary condition. We should uh, consider the another factors, that's a dynamic diffusion, which is uh, caused by sweeping of copper atoms by this location like this. But uh, this is just an idea, so we have to uh, confirm the distribution of copper atoms. So we are now considering to use a 3D atom probe. So now uh, we are starting a collaborative st uh, study with uh, steel companies. In addition, I'd like to, s uh, I think that the uh, calculation method is also important. For example, MD simulation is uh, one of the powerful uh, tools, I think. So I should collaborate with uh, Professor Muneto uh, right now. So the uh, this is conclusion. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for Professor Tsujiyama for this interesting talk. Now it's open for discussions. Thank you very much, interesting talk. Uh, regarding your high resolution images in the undeformed uh, material, why don't you observe a sharp interface? Uh, interface structure. Yeah, you, you mentioned that it's blur. 
interface? Ah, I said uh, irregularly. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Yeah, I, I think that point we should uh, observe. But uh, uh, so far, I, I'm not confirmed a uh, uh, detailed structure. What is the, the subject. thickness of your sample? The thickness of your... Uh, thickness? Yeah, of your sample. Uh, the TM sample. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I, I'm sorry that this observation was car uh, done by the Professor Murayama in Virginia. So I'm sorry that the yeah, detailed experiment. Okay, so. thanks. Sorry. Question at the back? Yeah, please. Uh, thank you for the very interesting talk. I've just a comment to your um, properly mechanism of the mechanical dissolution. Actually, yes. this is what happens in more aging steel and uh, under fatigue assessment. Uh -huh. you, have a, you have a dissolution due to the crossing of the uh, um, dislocations um, several times. Uh -huh. yeah, so in the more aging hope, steel. I hope you will see it here too. Okay, thank you very much. So, of course, there are many, uh, some uh, reports on the dissolution particles especially in the aluminum alloys. So we checked some papers, but I don't know that paper, so please ask. Uh, huh? Sorry? I'm sorry, this is not published. Ah, oh, not published. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other questions? Uh, can I know, uh, do you deform your specimen by rolling or by, yes. by, uh, by rolling? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, in fact, we reduce the thickness, so uh, we 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 un we should consider the the uh, the form of the deformation. So um, usually the soft face will become uh, elongated. It's it's, it's 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 quite normal case for the soft face, but also, also we should consider the interface uh, effect. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just wonder if you study the nano size particle mm -hmm. uh, in your in your experiment, uh, can you still get the elongated shape of the particle? Uh, so, sorry, sorry. Uh, because your your soft particle originally ah. is spherical. Spherical, right? okay. Like, and, and they elongated. And after deformation, it become elongated. Yes, yeah. yes. So uh, I just wonder if you uh, use a small size particle, nano size particle. Ah, nano size particle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, uh, nanoparticles, uh, in, in, in this study, we use the over-aged specimen, or over-aged particles. But in the case of peak-aged material, so the copper size was nano-sized, maybe 10 nanometers or less. So I'm interested in the uh, deformation structure of the peak-aged material. So we are now uh, starting the uh, investigation of the peak-aged material. But I confirmed that the Work softening occurs in the case of uh, peak aged material. This means the uh, dissolution occurs in the also in the nanostructure and uh, nanoparticles. Okay. Uh, okay. In, in this case, we will consider the coherent boundary and coherent, coherent boundary. boundary. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just wonder whether the, trans uh, the deformation mode are different or not for these two cases. Okay. Okay. Uh, in the case of copper. The uh, nanostructured particles has a BCC structure. Because you have a different chemical composition for the yes, yes. size and big Chemical size. composition and uh, uh, structure is both different in the case of the peak aged material. So in the case of BCC structure, the slip planes are uh, continuous. So I think the cutting is easily occurred and the dissolution would be occurred easily, I think. Uh, any other questions? Okay. You showed some DSC results, right? DSC? Uh, yeah, where you said that copper clusters form again. This one? But, but when you cold work, the copper precipitates do not dissolve completely, do they? Ah, completely dissolved. C completely. Uh, uh, there are no traces of precipitates. <coughs> do they uh, dissolve completely or some precipitates? Ah, no, no, no. A part of copper is dissolved. So in this case, so but a soluble copper can uh, a part of soluble copper can cause uh, precipitation. I think. So when will it will re-precipitate? It will form on the pre-existing precipitate rather than fresh clusters will form. Uh, uh, so, so sorry, you, you mean that? Uh, so when it is re-precipitating? Re-precipitating. Ah. It will precipitate on the existing precipitates rather than fresh clusters which will form. 
uh, the uh, reprecipitation occurs in the. So because it has dissolved from the copper particle. Yes. The particle exists still this exists, so it will reprecipitate there rather than press clusters, which will form. Uh, so <laughs> sorry, I, I can understand you. Uh, no, re, uh, dissolve the copper precipitation on the aging treatment after cold rolling. So you, you mean that the effect of, uh, of copper on the stress strain curve? Uh, uh, di dissolved. So when I sp I'm saying that when it will re precipitate. At re precipitate, the yeah, it, yeah. It will form on the pre existing copper precipitate particles rather than press cluster. Ah, rather than clusters. He's, ah. he's asking whether the, when they reprecipitate, will that precipitate to the existing, ah, oh, existing okay, okay. ones and or not to form new clusters? Ah, okay, okay. Uh, the site of precipitation site, site of uh, cluster. Uh, I, I, I have not uh, checked the nucleation site, but I guess the, uh, there are many dislocations or uh, lattice defect in the ferrite matrix. So I think that the a cluster will be formed at uh, uh, that dislocation, not on the undissolved copper particle. Okay. Uh, is there any other question? Or? Uh, one thing, I have two questions. The okay. first one is how to measure the lattice parameter with deformed copper particles, and the, the I'm concerned about the accuracy. Uh -huh. uh, because this is a deformed ah. particle. So ah. there is one no, no, no. We, we didn't measure the lattice parameter of copper. Lat we measured lattice parameter of ferrite matrix. Ferrite matrix. So copper, is go <laughs> copper goes into the ferrite matrix. The lattice parameter is changed due to the uh, difference, the uh, atomic size of iron and uh, copper. still deformed ferrite. Yeah. When the copper reprecipitates, then maybe preferential nucleation site is a pre-existing uh, epsilon copper, mm -hmm. uh, uh, rather than the dislocation oh, really? uh, area. Oh, uh, Epsilon copper, you mean the epsilon copper becomes a nucleation site of cluster? Yes, maybe so. Oh. Nucleation site. Ah, so Maybe you are right. This location also provides mm -hmm. a nucleation site mm -hmm. for copper clusters, but, uh, uh, but okay. pre existing epsilon copper okay. can provide a nucleation site. Okay. But his comment. Okay. I agree with your opinion. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Okay. I think we, oh, there's a, well, I think we have to move on and then we can have this discussion uh, later in private. Uh, so let's thank again to the speaker for his interesting talk. <laughs>